the number that you could come up with for him fulfilling all 324 prophecies is almost impossible to calculate. It may be possible for someone to fake one or two prophecies to manipulate the world to make a couple of them happen, but it would be impossible for anyone to arrange 50, let alone 324. Are you with me? Do you see how improbable that would be? Well, there's nerds in the world. And one nerd is named Peter Stoner. And he wrote a book called Science Speaks, which some of you would find. Actually, I thought this would be really interesting. So I looked it up on Amazon. It's only $170. So if you want to buy it, we can pass it around to our <laughs> science nerds. Because I'm not buying it. <laughs> I'm just saying. Anyway, this guy is a professor at Westmont College. And he has calculated the probability. So there's laws of probability in science. Now, you scientists, email me later, okay, if I say something wrong, because I might. I'm not a scientist. But he calculated the probability of one man fulfilling the major prophecies made concerning the Messiah. So he used his students, great, great example of a, of a professor using 600 university students to weigh out the different prophecies that, of Jesus in the Old Testament and to, to, to figure out what is the probability that one man would fulfill all these prophecies. So they started just simply uh, uh, calculating like what, how, this is sort of their method. Like in Micah 5.2, it says that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. Well, they had to, they had to calculate based on like the population of Bethlehem at the, in 30 AD. Who knows what the population of Bethlehem was in 30 AD, right? So they got to figure that out. They got to figure out how many people lived in the world. And then what is the probability that a single person would be born in Bethlehem? And they decided that number was one in 300,000. So one birth in 300,000 would be born in Bethlehem. Are you with me? Don't check out. I'm telling you, it's going to be interesting. Hopefully I can deliver. (laughs) So they say, okay, there's one. That's fine. So after examining eight prophecies, so just eight. Everybody say eight. Eight prophecies. They conservatively estimated, conservatively, that the chances of one individual fulfilling eight prophecies of the Old Testament for Christ is this number. Do I have the number? That number. So if you're wondering, how do you say that number? Here you go. One person in one quintillion. That one person would fulfill eight prophecies. Eight. How many do we have of Jesus? 324. So you might be thinking to yourself, I wonder what that number is. Let me give you an example of this number. Suppose you had one quintillion silver dollars. One, you'd be rich. Bless the lamb. (laughs) Pay your tithe. That's it. (laughs) If you took one quintillion silver dollars and you marked one of them and you spread them over the state of Texas, anybody ever driven through Texas? You drive seven hours, you're still in Texas. <laughs> the landmass area of Texas is enormous, okay? If you took these one quintillion silver dollars, so however big a silver dollar is, and you stack them up across the entire state of Texas, do you know how high that stack would be? Two feet. Two feet over the whole state, one quintillion silver dollars, you mark one of them. You blindfold Jeremy Hostetler, and you say, Jeremy, walk as far as you want. Go anywhere in the entire state you want and pick one coin. And that one coin must be the one that we marked. What are the odds that Jeremy, in the entire state of Texas, two feet deep, is going to pick the one coin? I mean, how many of you know it's like zero? or one in one quintillion. That's just eight prophecies. So that's a one, uh, actually it's a 10 with 17 zeros, or a one with 18 zeros behind it is 10 to the 17th power, okay? Everybody with me so far? (laughs) 
hold on. Okay. I want you to, I want you to think about this. We did not say to Jeremy, go and find the one we marked. We blindfolded him and say, go randomly choose the one we marked. There's a difference, right? There's a difference. So that's eight prophecies. What happens if we take 48 prophecies? That number can't even fit on our screen. It is 10 to the 157th power. 10 to the 157th power. And you're like, that doesn't sound like much. Do you know, if you were to take all of the, and I did fact check this. Did you know that if you took all of the atoms, how many of you know atoms are like pretty dinky, right? Like they're real small. If you took all of the atoms in the entire known universe, you think that'd be a lot of atoms? Okay. If you took all of the atoms in the entire known universe, you get this number, 10 to the 78th power. Some people say 10 to the 82nd power. We're saying the chances of one individual, this is not my, this is calculated by these people, way smarter than me, I'm just gonna say it. The chances of an individual fulfilling 48 prophecies is almost twice all the atoms in the entire known universe. We mark one atom and we put a spacesuit on Tony Mole. And we say, Tony, go find or go, we blindfold him, we, we, we put duct tape over his screen, you know, can't see. And we say, go and choose one atom. That's the probability that Jesus fulfilled 48 prophecies. The number that you could come up with for him fulfilling all 324 prophecies is almost impossible to calculate. You with me? Is your mind blown yet? So here's what this professor said. Any person who rejects Christ as the son of God is rejecting a fact. Proved perhaps more absolutely than any other fact in the world. That's unbelievable. That's, uh, check my math, check my source. That's unbelievable. If you wondered, could Jesus actually be the Messiah. And why do, why do you think society and other religions have worked so hard to destroy a human's ability to believe in Jesus as the Messiah? But there's no, according to this statistician, there's, it's the most proven absolute fact that's ever been proven in the world. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the son of God. If we stopped at the prophecy, you cannot deny that he's the son of God. I've proven it to you scientifically, mathematically. He's the son of God. And that changes everything. It changes everything. 